Stephen Jill here. Howdy. Welcome to the House Academy Show, entertaining real estate investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about is a smooth transaction or a rehab even possible buying and selling houses? Oh, sure. <laughs> what would you say? I don't know, north of 90%? Just kidding. I would ask you. Could you imagine? Uh, you know, <laughs> what's well, the summary here? What's the summary here? Um, I'm going to describe the perfect scenario, and then I'm going to describe what really happens, and then we're going to talk about you make the decision. What do you think is the best way to go? Yeah, because I really think this is person specific, right. because we have uh, people in the group in the House Academy group that are just veterans, seasoned veterans who are so enthusiastic about doing certain deals, and then we have some that are just like, man. I just can't seem to find my zen, you know, these last couple of months. So some are set up for this, some are not. Mm -hmm. If you, I'll give you a hint. If you've been raised and your dad and you're, you know, in a construction environment, and you've got cheap labor, and you know, you you uh, you get nepotism pricing, uh, and you have, you know, your uncle's a carpenter, your dad can do foundation, whatever it is, and you're the general. I mean, you might be set up for that. Yeah. But then most of us are not. There's like six talents involved in rehabs, and uh, it comes down to personal talent and patience and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, it, it comes down to a real, what Jill just said, a frank conversation in the mirror about what you want to do for the next 30 to 60 days. And is it the best use of your time? We, we know people who have been doing a rehab for a decade. Right. It's in their soul. I was just saying, we have a good friend that came and stayed with us a couple weeks ago. It's in his soul. Mm -hmm. He could do so much more volume and make more yeah. money, but he actually loves it. So that's part of it is too, when you're at the end of this and you talk about this, you know, have your heart to heart with yourself, maybe that's who you are. You are you are a half artist. You're you're a, uh, an artist who lets it out by doing rehabs and picking the dream kitchen and then moving on and doing it again and again. And that's okay if you're set up for it and the financial stars are in alignment. <laughs> <laughs> you know what wrecks it for everybody? HGTV, but we'll talk about that in a second. Right. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the houseacademy.com online community. It's free. Rebecca wrote, do we take into consideration for sale properties versus sold properties on Zillow? Or do we just follow Stephen Jill's criteria and not worry about sold versus for sale? Example, if a county is showing 124 for sale properties in the last six months, but only 52 have sold, do I not use that county? This is an incredibly intelligent question. question. Uh, and the fact that you're even asking it and looking at these numbers and trying to make a, uh, an ever more educated decision about whether or not to buy and sell property in an area, which is the, should be my middle name. I am ever trying to improve on how I make uh, these decisions and why, because the market's ever improving. I wrote, wrote an article. Read or wrote? Uh, read. Okay. It wasn't even an article. I think it was a TV thing. It was a documentary about the drummer for Rush, Neil Peart, you know, who recently passed away. And, I, and my jaw was on the ground the whole time because all throughout his career, right to the last day when he stopped playing drums for physical reasons, he was taking lessons from ja different types of jazz drummers and different types of uh, musical theory. We should and always so, be doing it, that. Long, I don't. It, this can be debated forever, but you know, has long been said maybe one of the best, if not the best, rock drummer uh, ever. So at least top ten, let's just say. So for him to want to constantly improve, like Rebecca here, I think is is doing. I just think that's the greatest compliment there ever was. So if you continue to question this stuff, you're gonna do great. To an directly answer your question, if a county's showing 124 properties on Zillow uh, that are for sale over the last six months, but only 52 have sold, would you use that county? Here's the answer. The red, green, yellow test that we teach in the program answers these questions for you. So there's three or four or five stats that we look at in the red, green, yellow test. One of them is properties that have been listed in the most recent months uh, against properties that have sold and you want to see a one-to-one -one, about a one-to-one -one ratio in this case it's uh, not one, -to -one. I, and unfortunately she's got six months of data here so 
Six months is, is a little too long unless the days on market are that long. You know, if, if it's got 180 days on market, then you want to run away from that county anyway. Mm-hmm. So in this format, uh, whether it's audio or video, however you're taking it in, it's, in, it's very difficult for me to describe it unless you're looking at a spreadsheet and I, and I can cons- explain it, which is what all of our education does and what we talk about on our uh, webinars and, and all that stuff. So the fact that you're asking that question, it's a question that I've asked some version of my, my whole career. And for 25 years, I've been developing tools as technology and uh, the data that's available allows me to, to get the answers to that, to get to the bottom of which county to buy property in or which zip code in the case of houses. Well, that's great, Steve. Rebecca, let me answer your question now. <laughs> she whiz, that took a long time. Why, really? Oh my she God. She appreciates it. Yeah, well, you three times told her how smart she is, but you didn't answer the question. I answered it. Just kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you did. Did I? You did, but what could have gone a lot faster. Wow. I just See kidding. what I'm saying? This is what goes on in our house. <laughs> Man, Dad, please don't give me the speech again. Just kidding. She'll, uh, <laughs> just needs to, she'll wants a whole life of sound bites. Oh, my gosh. So here's the deal, Rebecca. She wants half sentences. Rebecca, if you're looking at 10 very specific nearby areas, and this is the best one, then yes. <laughs> if of all the 10, this is the worst one, How then How do you know which no. one's best or worst? Because you'll be able to tell. You know what? And by the way, Here's my thing too. If you're working at 10, you're lining up 10 similar things. I'm gonna say not even zips. Let's just say you're doing, or not even counties, you're doing zips. I hope you're doing zips here. I hope so too. Because this is a house can me show. I'm gonna use zips in this example, let's just say. Zip codes. Zip codes. You've got 10 zip codes and you're doing all of Las Vegas, for example. And this is the best you got. I'm like, all right, then if I really am doing Las Vegas, this is the best I've got. I need to account for this and I gotta buy right. And, and, and I need to move them. I need to be one of those 52 that are sold in the last, maybe of the last six months. So I need to be, I need to be one of the 10 that sold in the last, you know, 30 days or, you know, whatever it is. I need to make my property that good. I also might be saying, maybe I shouldn't be doing this area. Maybe I should look at this area or this. Area. I'm going to, before I even pull the trigger, now I know the best one, the zip code in this area. I need to look oh, at that. Oh, taking a long time answering the question now. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm answering it. Just kidding. Oh I'm sorry. No, no, like, no, no. It's gonna be I, like you're that right. Today. You're right. You're right. But then I also need to compare it to some other MSAs just to make sure I'm not going in wrong. That's my point. Maybe here's a sound bite. Like like that Joe Florida. Wants. Maybe Florida stinks right now. Maybe Tampa stinks right now. But uh, Atlanta's great. You know, let's let's look at all this stuff. The great equalizer in any of this. This is step one, and it ends up being the end step also. Every single time I do this, right. it's days on market. Yeah. And so that's what you're kind of alluding to here. My guess is that you're kind of new at this, but you're really good at statistics and stuff and uh, data. And so you're thinking through it that way. When you find a market that has days on market that's half of what other surrounding zip codes are, let's just use 30. 30 is a really good. 30 is where I start to pay attention. The lower, the better. And then you look at another statistic like the one you're alluding to here, which is how many properties have been listed and how many properties were sold month over month. Right. If 100 properties are listed and 100 were sold, that's a real healthy market. That's a one to one ratio. And there's a couple other things to look at at the risk of boring the hell out of jail. I'm not going to bring up right now. <laughs> this is for the record. <laughs> what you're doing right now, Rebecca, is why I have Steven, because I'm like, that's I don't, right. I don't like just tell me where to go buy. Yeah. Tell me what this to is buy. exactly what goes on in just our office, just like this. Just so if you're that person in this group, you need to find someone like this one because it's not it doesn't work that way. Or if you're like me, find Jill. Somebody can just kill it on the phone. Right. Who can, you know, once you get the data out, once I get the data out there and it's and it's placed right and and uh, priced right and I did all the research on where the, what, where we should be buying us and why and send the market's really moving quickly stuff's getting listed and sold uh, you know and her phone starts to ring mm-hmm. we watch our bank balance go up that's the truth of it because mm-hmm. I used to do all this stuff myself and, and I did okay 
but nothing like that when I teamed up with Jill. And so in your career, hopefully you can do it all yourself in the beginning. You're a pretty good salesperson and you understand the data part. You probably wouldn't be listening to this if you weren't that person. Exactly. So if you can do a bunch of deals uh, on your own and do them pretty well, man, when you find a partner who does this stuff, because one of the, you're going to favor one or the other. I mean, I, I've never heard anyone say, oh, I love doing all of it. Right. You'll do great. Great question. Question of the week, actually. Today's topic is a smooth transaction or rehab even possible? This is why you're listening. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, that's this episode. <laughs> all right. It's all about what you're willing to put up with, like a marriage. Oh, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. We are not going there. Or if you want to go there, I will go there. But trust me, it won't be pretty. <laughs> Anything worthwhile is at least a little bit difficult, even three decades or four decades later. But in the end, you're going to have to tell yourself, that's yeah, totally worthwhile. Physical rehabs for me, physical rehabs of assets of any kind, whether it's, uh, or construction even, are not worth the effort for me. Okay, you wanna play this game, ready? Sure. I got this. <laughs> Here's the perfect scenario. I'm gonna give it to you in a house, and I'm gonna give it to you in a marriage. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> oh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the perfect scenario. This is why you would be doing a rehab on a house. Everything's HGTV. It's beautiful. You buy the house. It's in the dreamy area. It's the area that's coming back to life. It's like the mother and daughter. I can't remember their names right now. That do they're they're bringing this area back to life in whatever state they're Indiana. in. Indiana. Hey, thank you. And they always just buy the little houses there and they pick the cutest little things and they just make them great. And we never talk about all the all the uh, the windows that they were came in the wrong size. We don't talk about, you know, they do talk about there's some major problems, but they never seem to run out of money. You know, there's the stuff really does happen. It's not HGTV is not really how it goes. So let's just say, but the perfect scenario is it goes perfectly. You buy it for twenty thousand dollars and you sell it for one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and you put forty into it. Great numbers. There we go. Great TV numbers. That's those are the just like the Indiana girls. They buy things for twenty thousand yeah. dollars, and and they'll put that much in and, and they'll sell it. And then by the way, they sell it to this. They they say if you watch the show too, it's like a potential buyer. It's not always the actual buyer. So anyway, that's the thing, and it's just like in a marriage. You meet Ken. <laughs> And Ken is dreamy. Oh, like Barbie and Ken? Yeah, like Barbie and Ken. He's chiseled. It's he's tan. His hair is always perfect. Like it just is stuck that way. He he's the life of the party. He never argues and he never gets drunk. And he <laughs> <laughs> his car is perfect. He always cleans up after himself. And yeah, and and he never stinks. <laughs> he smells. New out of the box all of the time. Okay, so there's the perfect scenario. Now here's what really can happen. In the house scenario, um, things do go wrong. You you might have uh, a transaction where you you thought the roof looked good. You didn't see that it was three layers of roof and what's really going on under there. Or the flooring looks good. You don't realize that's not original and holy, oh my gosh, it's rotted under here. Thing, things like those happen uh, and you, you don't you, you go ahead nothing oh I thought that I can't like, wait to hear this sorry. I'm sure the listeners listeners are the same way exactly I can't wait to hear this that what your husband turns into yes here's, after you peel away the three layers see yeah. what's really going on <laughs> yeah so here's what goes on in your man <laughs> that was the tip of the iceberg on the real estate deal yeah the stuff that can go wrong yeah rehabbing a house is silly it's scary it really is. Why would you take that risk? Yeah. You know what's never gone wrong in a real estate deal that I ever, in the history of real estate deals that I've done, how much I paid for it. Why? Yeah. Well, we're going to get to I that in a minute. complete control over that. We're going to get to that. So, so they are back to the house thing too and the rehab thing. So that's just the physical stuff. You know, let's not, let's not discount, um, your all your team your workers that don't show up for 30 days because they freak out with a virus and they think they're safer at home or someone else has got them tied up on another project 
or the inspector that is late and working remote and they're a half staff or 10% of the staff and you need to get these permits done and these things done to, and, and because you're on a timeline because you finance this by the way you did it you have it a lot of people go into these rehabs down to the last penny with all the stars in alignment and one thing like a virus and their workers and the county say like the building's perfect but you have these other expenses you didn't account for and you're like great now i gotta pay an extra 60 days of this mortgage that i didn't account for you know or you know and penalties and things if things aren't if you don't have the you have x amount of days to meet this inspection criteria and your workers aren't there you could face penalties you could have to reapply for these permits and there's all kinds of things that can go wrong same as in a marriage <laughs> yeah the market could change in the middle through a marriage too he is peachy during football season and you love having your Sundays off off or just say baseball season I don't know whatever anyway your man is home you're all staring at each other now you're getting sick of each other <laughs> he doesn't have an office to go to and let it out on the office staff so guess what he's letting it out on you I'm just kidding I don't know <laughs> I'm totally just making this up as I go but you know what? You get to know him and he does stink. You, you know, he's not showering at the gym before he comes home. Oh, that chisel effect was gone now. Yeah, oh, by the way, he's not working out like he did because he had the FFP, the future fat potential. <laughs> <laughs> and his six pack is now right. His six pack is a donut it's around a his one pack. It's a one pack. It's a gallon. <laughs> because he's not hitting the gym every day before he comes home and, and, and having a, a scotch with his buddies. So he comes home with his, in a good mood, ready to tackle the you <laughs> and the kids with a smile on his face. <laughs> so that's what could happen. So the point is, do you really want to put yourself in that situation? You know... Your time is best spent. I guess the question is, what is your time best spent on? Boy, I have a question for you. Go ahead. <laughs> I know how to hedge off these rehabs really effectively. Yeah. I can take the, all the risk out of a rehab. <laughs> how do you do that with the man? Oh, my God. Well, that's a very good question. I, I know the answer. It's the same answer with real estate. You know what? Okay. I, you know what? This, well, for me, how do I hedge it off with a man? I, I, I look inward. <laughs> And I do what I have to do to maintain my sanity. That's tragic. Why? Here's my answer. Oh, if I can't you own, change you. You buy the house cheap and you own it for two weeks and sell it to somebody else who's going to uh, well, that's for take that. all the risk. That's what you do with the man. Get to know the guy really well for two weeks and then get rid of him and set, show him off on somebody else. That is also true. Go look for another acquisition. But if you're in a long-term committed relationship, it's not that easy. It's not too soon to get out. <laughs> We're late. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay, I, I'm with you. Go I, through a right. lot of deals. I was talking like this is long term, but you're right. Let's just say it's a rehab. So I've only known you 90 days anyway. I can get out. I can get under. I can undo this really fast. The front 10 percent of any relationship, whether you have a relationship with a rehab or a relationship with a person, is always the best. And the last 10 percent, if you don't get out of there in time, is always a fiery ball of tragedy in both of those situations. You are correct, sir. <laughs> <laughs> We're totally on the same page. <laughs> Get out. If it takes you two years to rehab a house, there's something diametrically wrong with all of it. If it, takes, it takes you, you two years, years to figure out this is a bad relationship. Yes. And they're stealing from you. Yes, Jeff. That's on you. That's, oh my gosh, you're the girl Thank for me. Thank you. <laughs> Can't take two years to rehab a house. You yeah. need to cut at well, way before that. You know, there's no such thing, in my opinion, as rehabbing a house on the weekend. Yeah. You got it yourself, you know, a DIY rehab by yourself to make 50,000 bucks. It's just not the right thing to do. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> happy you could join you us today. Let me, let oh, me you make want... this one last uh -oh. point here. Uh, okay. Hopefully there's a certain group of people out there that are, are completely disagreeing with everything we say. Because someone's got to rehab these houses and make this some money. True. And, and I, I really think well, it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's a purse back to the original point. It's all personality. And Jill and I are joking about this, but we are acquisition people in our souls. Jill's a deal maker in her soul. 
you know, she needs to make deals to, to feel right in the world. I've seen it when she doesn't after a while and she sure. starts going through all kinds of weird depression withdrawals. So she has, you know, fortunately we found each other because I, I don't like, I, I just said, I'm an acquisition person. That's just it, right. a data person. And so I think that there are people out there who are rehab people and they're happy to buy property off the MLS, do a lot of work themselves. It's their full-time job. I'm describing our buddy in, in I Phoenix know. here. I am. I know what you're talking uh, about. Yeah. And very successfully has accumulated a ton of money with very low overhead. Uh, and he's got real inexpensive labor. Right. And so it's just a personality type. That's it. And it's just, I think it's just in his soul what he likes to do. Because like you just said, we know what we like to do and that's what he likes to do. And we have had this conversation like, dude, why don't you do what we do and buy them even cheaper? Eh, it's not my thing. I'd rather just buy it from you guys. I know how you got it. I'm still getting a great deal. I'm getting it better than I went on the MLS because I know how you guys are. And everybody wins. That's it. So just, yeah, that's just which which one are you and how do you... How do you want to spend your time and money and dating? <laughs> Happy you could join us today. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we are right here on the House Academy Show. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we are on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is called, What Are Land Brokers Really Worth? 10%? Really? You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Easily. Yeah. Good land brokers worth 10% easy. Isn't that I think. funny? Like when it, um, isn't that how we look at them differently? When I look at when I look at a regular agent for houses, and no I'm like, three percent? Kidding me? For what? And you didn't do anything? But these land guys, I the ones that I have that we know, that are really good. I'm like, ten percent done. Here's a sneaky real reason that they're so different. There's no built-in land market out there that's automatic. There's a built-in house market. There's people that are looking in the zip code for a house anyway, and so. Real, residential real estate agents are just getting in the way of that deal. That's all they're doing. They're just, they're a gopher. And uh, land brokers are creating value true. by exposing properties, land properties. There's not people already looking in that area for property typically. They're finding them. They're saying, hey, John, I sold you a property over here a couple of years ago. This is, you know. Let's see it for the show. Yeah. <laughs> The House Academy Show remains commercial free for you, our loyal listeners. So wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We're, We're Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration. To buy undervalued property.